Hey everyone, it's Emily. Welcome to Mama From Scratch. Today I'm going to be sharing with you 15 TikTok DIY home hacks that actually work. These are DIYs that you will actually use in your everyday life that are super easy and they will make your life so much easier. And I thought you guys would really enjoy this. It's something that I've been wanting to make for the last two or three months, but I just couldn't get myself to make it. And I was like, you know what? I am making this for you guys, but I think it will be really helpful. And so thank you TikTokers for inspiring me. So if you enjoy it, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends they can learn this as well and with that let's go ahead and get started with these DIY home hacks So have you ever highlighted something that you wish you wouldn't have and now you can't take it back? Well, this is for you, especially if your kids highlight your books like mine have. So you can actually take a lemon or you can use lemon juice. It says you can use both. I use lemon juice because it's all I had and it worked great. I got a little bit on my Q-tip and then lightly rubbed it on to the highlighted portion of the book. And look, it's erasing it. It's so cool. It's like magic. I wish I would have known this years ago. So I thought this hack was really cool. I don't know why I've never known this. I feel like my dad's probably told me this, but for some reason I don't remember. So if you're measuring something that's between two walls, you can take that measurement there and then the actual measuring tape has a measurement on the back of it. So if it measures, let's say 10 inches, this is also three and an eighth long. So you would just add that and that's your total measurement. So I thought I'd check it out on this DeWalt uh, measuring tape and there you go, it has it as well. So next time you have your measuring tape, look at the back for the actual measurement measurement of it. For this next TikTok DIY hack, I don't think I've ever done this to a project before, so I'm kind of excited to show you guys this, but I've done a lot of Trash to Treasure products where I take something trash and I make it into a really beautiful piece of home decor, and that's what we're doing with this. So one trick, if you don't know this already, is you can actually just heat up the label and it should peel completely off for you. This orange juice label left its sticky residue. Most of the time on other items, it won't, like if it's just a normal label for something that you're buying at the store but this is meant to stay on there. So all I did was take my Waverly chalk paint, which I love, and I just went right over that stickiness on it and it wasn't sticky anymore. It did really has really good coverage. And so I'm just gonna cover the entire bottle with the white paint. Once that was dry, I went ahead and just dipped my brush lightly in some Provincial um, Wind Wax Stain and brush that on. I started off lightly because I wasn't sure how well it was going to blend. Waverly does make an antiquing wax or glaze basically and it works really well. But this TikTok DIY actually used real stain and I thought, hmm, I'm gonna give this a whirl and it worked out really good. Actually, the heavier you go with this, the better. You want a nice full coverage on it and just go in the grain and the brush it in the way that you would for the wood grains. So if you want horizontal wood grains, go horizontal. I wanted vertical. And once I got that pretty well coated with it, then I took a um, napkin and then just rubbed it off in the same direction as I want the wood grain to be. And I got off any excess that would be left on there. And you can see how this is looking like a wood vase. And I think this is so cool. It turned out really good. I'm not sure if it would work with regular paint because the chalk paint is pretty absorbent and has a flat finish. So I think that's why this works so well with the stain. Um, but whatever the case, once I got that all wiped down, I let that dry and then I actually took my um, X-Acto blade and then I'm going to cut off the portion that I don't want. So you can figure this out for whatever size you want your vase to be. Just try not to cut yourself on accident or anything, but you're gonna go in there and cut it. And then to get it nice and even, I actually went in with some scissors. Once I got it to the desired height I wanted, I went ahead and put some faux eucalyptus stems in there with some roses, and it looks absolutely beautiful. I love the faux wood look it has. It is perfect. So get yourself an old bottle and make it look like a cool wood vase. The next DIY hacks I have for you are actually for hanging pictures on the wall. So typically when I have two different hooks, I just take the measurement from the center of those hooks 
and then I put that up on the wall. Well, an easier way of doing it is just to take some painter's tape and then you're going to mark where your hooks would actually be on the wall, your nails, and you're gonna mark that on the painter's tape. Then you're gonna peel that off and then put that on the wall and make sure it's level. And then you're just going to nail right through there with your little marks and you can take the tape off and hang your picture, really easy. Another way you can do it is to take hacks and some painter's tape and you're gonna poke the tack through the sticky part of the tape side and then that way the pokey part is on the non-sticky side and then you're going to tape that to right where your hook is going to be, right where the round part is. You're gonna put that and tape that onto the surface of your picture or your wall hanging and then you're gonna do that for both sides. Then what you're gonna do is get a little level. Mine happens to be magneted on one side, which is perfect, but if you don't have it, it's okay. But you're gonna take your sign, put it up on the wall, and then what you're going to do, once you have it level, you're going to push those tacks into the wall, and those are also going to mark the wall for you. So if you're renting, I suggest doing it the other way because then you could just do command strips on the wall, but this way works really good as well too. So I thought this was a great DIY hack. I've never used this before, but I will definitely be using it now. So when you're working with a lot of wood projects or you can't go a certain uh, depth into your project, uh, whether that be wood or metal or the wall, you won't wanna drill too far. So something that you can do is take a piece of painter's tape and then put that tape right where it needs to stop. So this basically acts as a guide for you for when you're pre-drilling in. And so right when I get to that top of that um, painter's tape is where I'll stop and I'll drill right back out. And now I have the perfect depth for my project. So we're switching gears and we're moving to a food hack really quick. And this one is awesome. I love this. It works so good and it's super easy. So if you want to make a grilled cheese or a quesadilla basically without a pan, this is the way to do it. So you put the cheese halfway in, you fold it into a half moon shape, and then you're going to tuck in those sides. Just like that, you have a little sandwich. You're going to put that into the toaster. You can do it either direction. And I set mine to right around four and a half, but every toaster is different. Don't mind how dirty mine is I should probably clean that but you can see how it's melting and everything oh my gosh guys you don't need a pan you don't need spray or anything for this it works awesome so it'll pop up when it's done and these turned out so good no burning or anything and let me tell you, you have to let them cool a little bit because they are hot but look at that good melted cheese the kids approved let me tell you and so did I So for this hack, I actually saw that she used a lemon for this. So maybe it'll work better with a lemon, but she basically pokes the bottom of the lemon and then you squeeze it to juice it. And in her video, it worked awesome. This orange did not want to squeeze whatsoever and it was a fairly soft orange. So I just don't think that it's meant for an orange. Um, but I thought I'd give it a whirl anyways. But the other hack that I have for this that actually worked for me anyways is to take a spoon to peel the orange. So when I first inserted it into the rind, it definitely squirted out a little bit, but once you get that in there, it's so easy. You basically just work yourself around the uh, fruit on the inside and it just peels right off. It's so easy, you don't get it all in your nails or anything. I really like this. So I don't know about you, but if you have kids, you know these little clips that come with bread? Yeah, mine always get lost. So you don't actually need those anymore. All you gotta do is twist your loaf of bread and then fold over the wrapping part over it. And the more bread that's gone, obviously the easier it stays. And then just flip it over and it will stay fresh just like that. So this is a really fun DIY. You can definitely do this with your kids, but this is for more desserts and stuff. You take bubble wrap, I did wash it, and then I taped it down so it wouldn't budge on me. I melted some chocolate, added a teeny bit of coconut oil to it, and then I spread that out. The thinner you go, the more holes actually will have in it. But I just basically made a nice little square with that, and then I peeled it off and then put that onto a tray. And then I'm just going to pop that into the freezer until it hardens. I feel like this is just so fun. My boys love watching Chelsea Sweets on uh, TikTok. And when I pulled this off, there's only one little spot that stuck 
Um, so I just broke that off because I obviously don't want to see any plastic. Um, and then you have these really cool, it looks like a honeycomb, but the one that's on TikTok actually has holes in it. So the thinner the layer, probably the better, but my boys enjoyed this so much. Alrighty, this one, disclaimer, I have not painted my nails in years, okay? It's just not something I feel like doing, but this DIY said to take a Band-Aid and put that on the edge of your nail, and then I actually cut mine in half, that way I could put the bottom part of it on the under part of my nail, that way it wouldn't, I wouldn't have to use any nail polish remover, and then you simply, um, add your paint on especially for like a french manicure which i believe this is what that is oh gosh guys it's been so long since i've done nails and you let that dry and then you peel it off i don't think i got mine pressed on well enough uh, for a really super clean edge but then you put your top coat on and then you remove the bottom it's super clean i will say that but my edge is a little bit wobbly so you know a little bit more practice i guess the next TikTok DIY home hacks is actually for cleaning. So you're going to need the cardboard part of a paper towel and then you also need your vacuum. So typically after every use of my dryer, I clean out the lint area and mine happens to be on the bottom. Some people's are on the top where the controls are, but I don't always vacuum this. Let's be real. This maybe gets vacuumed once a month, but something that you should do is actually vacuum the crevices. And what I like to do, I thought this was so cool, is you basically put the cardboard onto your vacuum, it doesn't matter what vacuum you have, and then hold it on there, you can tape it on, and then it will get down into those areas that are really the small crevices because it flattens and it will actually suck out the stuff. And I'm gonna show you how much was actually in there. Um, I thought it worked really well, and I'm just holding it, you could totally tape it on to your surface if you wanted to, but put everything back the way it was, and this is how much came out of that little spot. That's actually a lot. And then I thought, wait a second, what about underneath the dryer and the washing machine? My Dyson doesn't fit underneath there, and so I went ahead and just worked it back and forth, and it brought out quite a bit. It got some sucked inside, but also a little bit got attached on the top of it. So, you know, there's a lot in there if there is, and just wait till you see how much came out from the bottom. And I did not empty it from the last time. So you'll get to see the real deal. And I know there's more underneath there, but for those of you that can't lift your dryer out of the way, this is the way to go. So one way to make your sponges go a lot farther is to actually cut them in half, especially if you're doing special cleaning or deep cleaning for your house, and take a Sharpie, and then for those hard to reach spots that are really annoying to clean, like say the door sill and stuff, you're going to mark all the spots where there's ridges, and then you're going to take a, a knife or a pair of scissors and you're actually going to cut down on those lines and where the two center ones are I went ahead and cut out that because that's for the door track you're gonna get it wet or with whatever solution you're cleaning with and then drag it back and forth and it will actually clean out this area really well it works great in window seals as well So the next couple hacks have to do with painting. So this is typically what my paint cans look like because I just pour right out. You could actually use a flathead screwdriver to open up your can of paint if you don't know that. So there's a little trick for you. You don't need that special tool. The next thing is to actually get your drill if you have one and get a plastic spoon that has a rounded handle. That way you can put it inside like a drill bit and then you would tighten it and then you can mix up those old cans of paint that have been sitting for a while without, if you, especially if you don't have the wooden sticks or anything like that so that's a really cool thing that you can do I never thought about doing that before um, the next hack this one actually is a fail for me I tried it twice and it did not work so it says to actually take the painters tape and fold it over so you're creating like a V on the top and I made sure it's pretty sealed and then you basically pour this into your jar whatever you're doing don't worry these are the same color paints so I poured a pretty good amount in there and then you're supposed to take it off and there's supposed to be no drips well, there were no drips, but it still filled up the side rim quite a bit more than it would have if I would have done it without it. So that was a fail for me and I tried twice. 
But a really cool hack that I learned that I've never done before, which works really well, is to take some saran wrap and put it over your paint can and then hammer around the edges. It makes for a really clean seal and then it won't dry out on you either. And I'm just using my paintbrush to show you that you can hammer it down. The next hack is to actually take a rubber band and wrap it around the handle area that sticks out there of your paint can and then you're going to use that to brush off the excess paint instead of using like the jar that's rounded you just use the um, rubber band for it and i thought it worked really well i like the fact that it gets rid of all the drips and it's not a hassle to work with and when you're done you can just simply remove the rubber band this is definitely something i'll be using from now on So you know how when you hang your sweaters up, they can kind of have them sag and that's not good because it stretches out the sweater. So you take a hanger and then you put in the sleeves on the inside of the hanger, right about the armpit length, and then you just simply hang it up and you're good to go. It no longer stretches out the shoulder part of your sweaters, which I think is so cool. What did you guys think about all the DIY home hacks? Will you guys be using them? Did you find them helpful? I know I've been using a lot of them and I really enjoyed them. And I just want to say thank you to all the TikTokers out there who have put in the time and effort and created these videos to inform us. Thank you so much. I will have their videos linked down in the description box below, as well as Christina from the DIY Mommy. She put together one of these videos and it turned out so good. And I hope that you guys will go check her out as well. If you happen to miss my last videos, they'll be here on the screen and also more in the description box below. If you enjoy DIY and home decor related videos, definitely hit that subscribe button. And with that, I hope you all have an amazing day. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you soon.